motivate us to live ready, to live holy, and to live with a search, uh, a sense of urgency in doing the will and the work of God. Not simply to fill our heads with Bible knowledge, because this is a common problem with many who are students of Bible prophecy and eschatology, is they get carried away in all of the subject matter and the details and uh, the false teachers and the attempt to weave numerology and so many things that uh, are not really provable by Scripture. And if you're not careful, you can get lost in the weeds of Bible prophecy and forget that the real motivation of Bible prophecy is not to fill our heads with details of knowledge, but to keep our hearts ready for the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. God never predicted in the Bible future events just to satisfy our curiosity. What you're going to learn today, and I pick my words carefully, but what you're going to learn today is one of the most visible and provable markers that points to the eminent prophecy concerning the rebuilding of the third temple in Jerusalem that we find in the book of Revelation that is active and functional during the seven-year tribulation period. As I speak, there is not a third temple. Uh, most of you that are students of the Word, if you've followed me for any length of time, you know that the temple was destroyed by the Romans in A.D. 70. The Jews were dispersed throughout the world in two different occasions in history, A.D. 70, A.D. 135. And from the days of Christ until now, there has been no third temple. This is an incredible piece of the puzzle of Bible prophecy, therefore understanding the significance of a perfect red heifer is equally important as a part of that puzzle of Bible prophecy. Uh, the Temple Institute in Jerusalem, Israel, made a huge step just days ago in reinstating the temple service. Uh, this occurred just last Thursday when five red heifers landed at the Ben-Gurion Airport, uh, which I have been there before and landed there before. It's about uh, 45 kilometers, I think it's northwest of uh, Jerusalem, Israel. And this may be a surprise to you, but the Temple Institute Red Heifer Program that was instituted over a decade ago, as they began to feel as Jews the need for the third temple and preparations, even though there is not currently a third temple, uh, Jews from around the world headed up by Jewish leadership began to have discussions out of that the Temple Institute about a decade ago began to put together a plan for the birth of a perfect red heifer. They were unsuccessful in Israel. And quite interesting, a rancher in Texas who is a born-again Christian felt in his heart to begin to breed red heifers with the thought in mind that perhaps in some small way he could be a part of fulfilling Bible prophecy. Without going into the tedium of details, there was a divine connection between the Temple Institute in Jerusalem and the knowledge of this born-again Christian Texas farmer who was raising red heifers and not long ago they flew over 
and inspected and had five of those red heifers just days ago, last Thursday, flown and delivered to Jerusalem, Israel. The red heifer is the main component in the biblically mandated process of what is called ritual purification. And that's not only because of sin, but also uh, for those in Judaism who came in contact with dead bodies and so on, these elements are needed for this ceremony of purification, and they have been absent since the destruction of the second temple. Very important that you hear what I'm about to say, because here is where we start to see the threads of prophecy being woven throughout the narrative. There has been no certified red heifer available to the Jews since the days of Jesus Christ. Now, as you're going to learn in the moments ahead, the red heifer is actually a type of Jesus Christ, and I'll come back to that and put some meat on that bone for you. But I repeat, because it's this important for you to have in your notes, there has not been a certified red heifer born since the days of Jesus Christ. So as that laid down for a foundation, let me begin to answer the three questions that I promised we would cover today in our study. And if you're taking notes, Number one, why is the red heifer so important to Bible prophecy? Why is the red heifer so important to Bible prophecy? Well, the reason for that is most Bible prophecy scholars agree on this. Now, Bible prophecy scholars don't agree on everything. But upon this, the weight of scholarship agree that when a red heifer is born, it would be a clear sign of the coming of the third temple as was seen in the book of Revelation. Again, there has been no certified red heifer since the days of Jesus Christ. And so since the Bible prophesies a third temple being rebuilt. A third temple could not be functional because it would be required to have this ceremony of ritual purification. That ceremony that Jesus said was going to be a part of the future. God in the Old Testament made clear, I read it to you out of Numbers 19, that it's a permanent law. There's no doing away with this purification. And the ashes of the red heifer are needed for that ceremony. God said it's a permanent law throughout all of Judaism. So even if they were to construct a third temple today, they could not continue in the function and the services and the rituals and the sacrifices and so on, you couldn't even cleanse the priesthood and those who would be a part of the participation of such without the purification ceremony and the ashes of the red heifer are needed for that. Did you know that from the time of Moses, who was the first one to prepare the purification offering with the ashes of a red heifer, from the time of Moses until the destruction of the temple, only nine red heifers have ever been certified. They are incredibly rare. Now, some would say, well, how did they conduct all of those uh, multiple rituals of purification? How did they do that? Well, uh, as we're going to learn, and we'll come back to it as well, you don't need the ashes of the entire red heifer. Only a small quantity 
of the ashes of the red heifer are needed for the ritual of purification. And so one red heifer that is certified and the process of how it's burned and what's added to the fire and the priest's handling and so on, you could use over and over and over the ample amount of ashes that would come from that one single burnt sacrifice. And Moses was the one who initiated this, and only nine in history have ever been certified. Those nine actually provided the ashes needed for purification ceremonies for uh, 2,000 years. But as I said earlier, and that's why I emphasized it, from the days of Christ until now, there has been no ashes available and there have been no perfect red heifers certified. So according to Jewish tradition, there will only be 10 red heifers ever born in history for the purposes of Judaism, temple rituals, and so on before the Messiah is revealed. So now you're perhaps beginning to see why many around the world, especially in circles of Judaism and in Israel at the Temple Institute, that people are beyond excited that these red heifers have arrived from Texas, delivered to the Ben-Gurion airport, taken into the care of the Temple Institute just days ago. And the existence of such a heifer is considered a biological uh, anom anomaly incredibly rare, as would have been covered in the fact that there hasn't been one certified since the days of Christ. And one of the major difficulties in securing a flawless red heifer by God's standards in the Bible, because it had to be entirely red. The internal part of the ear, uh, the flesh inside the ear actually has to be red. All four hooves have to be red. Uh, the entire body of hair has to be red. As a matter of fact, they inspect every single hair to certify it. You're only allowed two non-red hairs. And if there are more than two hairs on the entire body of the calf, then it is not qualified to be used in the sacrifice. But one of the problems, and especially in many countries of the world, is that governments require for legal ranching that the ears of the calves have to be tagged immediately at birth. Well, this legal process and governmental requirement, by tagging the ear of the calf, even if it were a perfect red heifer, by punching a hole in its ear, you have introduced a defect that by God's law renders that red heifer not suitable for the purification offering. So this has been a problem and was a major problem even for this born-again Christian in Texas who for some reason felt stirred in his heart to start a ranch and begin breeding red heifers uh, and he was doing it for Israel, uh, knowing the Bible. He felt stirred in his heart. But American regulations obviously are as strict, and in most cases, much more strict than other parts of the world. Because as those calves are born, uh, someone had to immediately come to the ranch, punch the hole in the ear, and tag them, but guess what happened during COVID? During COVID, uh, governmental mandates caused there to be individuals who did not come to the ranch, uh, either through people, as in many jobs, there was a, a long list of people who retired from jobs who refused to take the mandate 
whether there was a lack of staffing or help, uh, I couldn't find anything in my research that the law uh, were more than thrilled to take these five and bring them to Jerusalem. So let me give you just a quick summation of that first question because I've covered a lot of uh, data there. Why is a red heifer so important to Bible prophecy? Because a certified red heifer must be born in order for the new temple to function according to Old Testament law. The certified red heifer would have to be sacrificed for the water of cleansing, for the certification of a third temple, for the certification of the priests, and for all of the requirements of the law. That brings us to question number two, uh, which evolves out of question number one, because most of you perhaps have never had any biblical teaching on what exactly is the water purification ceremony that the ashes of the red heifer are needed for. So question number two, what is the water purification ceremony? The purpose of the red heifer sacrifice, as we read in our text today, in that passage in Numbers chapter 19, was to provide for the water of cleansing, which is just simply another term for the purification of sin. I asked you earlier to highlight verse 9 in Numbers chapter 19 because of its significance. Let me read it to you again. Numbers chapter 19. Get my ribbon here. That's why they put ribbons in Bibles. Numbers chapter 19, verse 9, Then someone who is ceremonially clean will gather up the ashes of the heifer and deposit them in a purified place outside the camp. They will be kept there for the community of Israel to use in the water for the purification ceremony. The ceremony is performed for the removal of sin. So here we see it again, according to the Old Testament, a red heifer, uh, some might better understand that by saying a reddish brown cow, was to be sacrificed as a part of the purification rites of the Mosaic law. And because the elements needed uh, for this ceremony have not been available since the days of Christ and the destruction of the second temple, do you realize that all Jews born from that time until this time, are ceremonially unclean. From the destruction of the second temple, after the death of Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, every Jew born is ceremonially unclean. Now perhaps you understand why Jews around the world are so excited, and this is making its way like ripples through a pond throughout Jewish news sources, radio, media, TV, social media, that five red heifers just days ago landed there in Jerusalem. All Jews 
are ritually impure. Because there's not a single Jew on the planet that's ritually pure, there can be no one qualified to deal with the rebuilding and the rituals of the third temple. And if you're paying attention, I think you're starting to see a path of clarity as to why this study is so vitally important. That brings us to the last question. Number three, is the birth of the red heifer a sign of the end times? And the short answer to that is yes, with a large exclamation point. Absolutely, it is significant as a sign of the end times. One of the things in conclusion that I want to teach you is that there's also significance concerning the red heifer that perhaps is not embraced by Judaism, but is certainly taught in the scripture and embraced by those of us who are followers of Christ. Because as you might imagine, and some of you perhaps have already begun to see this through the study, the red heifer is actually a type of Jesus Christ. The imagery of the blood of the heifer without blemish being sacrificed and its blood cleansing from sin is a foreshadowing of the blood of Jesus Christ who also was significant, who also was holy, who also was without sin, without blemish. Jesus was without blemish, the scripture teaches us, just as the red heifer was. And as the heifer was sacrificed, the Bible tells us in Numbers chapter 19 and verse 3, the, the red heifer in the, in the sacrificial ceremony had to be sacrificed outside the camp. You can find those three words in verse 3 of Numbers 19. It had to be sacrificed outside the camp. In the same way, Jesus was crucified outside of Jerusalem. Go into your Bibles into uh, the book of Hebrews and the 13th chapter. Hebrews chapter 13 and go down to verses 11 and 12. Hebrews 13 verses 11 and 12, the Bible said, And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. The slaughtering of the red heifer and the water of purification was a ceremonial ritual in the Old Testament system that is a foreshadowing that points not only to the Jewish Messiah promised by the prophets of old, but also as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Uh, perhaps the leading rabbi in the world, uh, his name is Rabbi Kian Richman. He's the international director of the Temple Institute, made this comment about recent events. Quote, he said, if there has been no red heifer, for the past 2,000 years, perhaps it is because the time was not right. Israel was far from being ready. But now, what could it mean for the times we now live in to have the means for purification so close at hand? With the words of the Maimonides in mind, we cannot help but wonder and pray, if there are now red heifers, is ours the era that will need them? That, my friend, is not the quote of a pastor or a Christian leader or a notable evangelist, nor a Christian. That is the quote of one of the leading rabbis in the world. I love his last statement. If there are now red heifers, is ours the era that will need them? 
And so the question is, a red heifer being certified, being born, important to end time prophecy, it is absolutely essential because before there can be the building and the certification of the third temple and the utensils and the priests and the Jews, etc., there must be a certified, flawless red heifer that will be that sacrificial animal through which its ashes will allow the fulfillment of a prophecy that we see so clearly in the book of Revelation. The next major prophetic event, I say it repeatedly because I want it branded in your mind, body, and spirit. The next major prophetic event is the rapture of the church. After the rapture of the church, the Bible tells us we will enter into a seven-year tribulation period. At some point in the first three and a half years, the temple is going to be built and will be in use. But three and a half years into that seven years of tribulation, the Antichrist who will arise at the beginning of the tribulation after the rapture, Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 tells us so, he will violate that seven-year peace treaty that he made with Israel and with the Jewish people, and he will defile that third temple, and he will announce himself as being God. It is during that time that he breaks the peace treaty with Israel, ascends to a satanic throne in the Holy of Holies, in the third temple. Daniel called it the abomination of desolation. Then he will bring about what is called the mark of the beast. He'll force people to take that mark without which no one will be able to buy or sell. But it's not just an economic mark. It is a pledge of public and personal allegiance to this Antichrist who now declares himself to be God, violating his treaty with Israel. The wrath of God will then escalate in the last half of the tribulation that will end by the second coming of Jesus Christ, who by the word of his mouth will destroy the Antichrist, will both purify and preserve Israel. All of Israel shall be saved, those who remain. And the tribulation saints will also be in heaven. One day you will meet them. I am thankful today to hear the news just not long ago. I wanted to give you a prophecy update today on the significance in 2022 with the arrival of five red heifers and all of what is going on leading us to a clear marker in prophecy that we must be close to the building of the third temple and if we are this close to the rebuilding of the third temple and the temple is not built until after the rapture, how much closer must we be to the rapture of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? I conclude with this. You need to live ready every day to meet the Lord. That's why I begin by telling you Bible prophecy is not given to us just to give us data and trivia and knowledge to store in our heads, but the listening to, the teaching of, the preaching of, as you hear Bible prophecy, should be fuel on a fire in your belly to keep you hot and holy for the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like a thief in the night, live ready every day to meet the Lord. If you're listening to me right now, and I never try to come across as condescending or condemning, but if you're listening to me right now and you don't have an assurance that you're living ready to meet the Lord, that you're living in victory over sin and sin is not living in victory over you, will you pray with me today at the end of our study right now? Thank you.